welcome to the csr vocal this edition of csr vocal which gram uh, has been facilitating that is i also wanted to understand like you know uh, in terms of you know uh, personal leadership philosophy uh, when it comes to csr uh, what are your thoughts advice and insights which you would like to share with individuals and then organizations basically in terms of improving their csr initiatives what has been your experience in terms of uh, the corporate social response i also believe that uh, uh, let me talk about the you know the practitioners first the practitioners uh, those who are new those who are aspiring those who want to make a career out of it they must understand the importance of the stakeholders they must understand uh, how to engage different stakeholders even at this point, point of time this is one of my greatest weakness i must admit it is very difficult to manage stakeholders at multiple levels and uh, especially the practitioners who who have 5 10 8 9 10 or maybe 12 years of experience in thinking about them if you have a plant at multiple locations there are plant heads there are local community and maybe if if you are into a business of suppose mining or maybe uh, the business that is somehow you know impacting the environment or impacting the society and the challenge becomes more, more than double okay community is a top stakeholder your government is a top stakeholder and the top management top officials from the companies those who are actually facing the society actually facing the heat of the heat of the society they are also the top stakeholders so acting as a csr head or acting as a csr professional you have to understand one has to understand to whom to manage how to manage whom to prioritize how to prioritize it could A CSR professional could be in a crossroads where if he is giving priority to the community, he is becoming anti to the company. If he is giving priority to this company, he could be the anti to the society. Okay. Simultaneously, if he is giving priority to both, he could be a uh, you know anti to the government at, as well. Right. So the balanced approach is very very difficult and one has to learn in the due course of time it is it cannot happen uh, if we we'll talk about me my issue is that if i'm angry that angriness is you know is visible in my face if i'm disappointed that is visible in my face i mean that is completely natural that is human but sometimes i feel the csr person has to be very diplomatic in nature also while you know taking everybody on board okay i'm not saying everybody to say yes but taking everybody on board managing everybody in a way that nobody will be disappointed rather everybody will understand that yes we do have certain contribution and our contribution or our uh, you know consideration or our request has not been neglected rather it has been considered in that way okay if things are done i think things can be managed and can be taken in a better way that is point number 1 the second point i'm just wanting trying to you know share with the companies those who are into csr i mean they must have uh, i'm not talking about the big companies uh, i'm talking about the mid size companies i'm talking about the small size companies uh, they must understand uh, you know and give value to the person who is responsible to implement the csr because that person goes to the ground that person understand the you know pulse of the community the pulse of the society sitting at the corporate level or maybe at the you know executive level or maybe the the top management level if i want to do something and that has less you know relevancy towards what the company should do does not make any sense i have seen people who are giving charities to you know to different different uh, ngos and somebody has five crores of csr budget and he has 50 clients 50 ngo partners i have seen these companies and what they do the ngo is coming they are writing a check somebody 5 lakh somebody 50 lakh somebody 10 lakh somebody and 
what the NGO is doing? Some NGO is giving food to street dogs. Some NGO is giving, you know, uh, some contribution to to the street people, those who cannot afford blankets. Somebody is, uh, you know, uh, creating a temple. Okay. So what happens? No, NGOs also must understand that this is not philanthropy or this is not charity. It has to be aligned with business. And same time, business also understand that they should say no to the NGOs if that, you know, uh, that that does not make a scalable impact towards the community. Rather, my approach would be like this. Take a bigger project. If you want to engage more NGOs, do that. Make it on a larger scale. Do it for three years, five years, and see the impact. Rather than distributing money in a charitable way, just take up large projects, plan it out, execute it. And if you want to engage, hire the topmost agencies, topmost think tanks. And after that, you see the result. Of course, if you cannot deny small NGOs like 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 2 lakhs, you can keep a kitty out of there, out of the CSR. Maybe 5%, 10% you will be distributing to those NGOs, but the small, small causes, that is completely fine. But major chunk, maybe 70%, 80% of a chunk of the CSR budget should go for a long-term project. That's, that's what I have to do, communicate. It's really, you know, uh very resonating in terms of the thoughts, Rajesh I mean, very happy to see that the kind of thoughts of CSR should devise long-term sustainable CSR projects, which can impact at scale. So this is very, you know, encouraging uh, to see that, I mean, uh, CSR heads are also thinking in this way, which is very important and evident that, I mean, to ensure social change happen, it is not, uh, it is not possible in a very short time. Right. It requires long term, long term, continuous and sustainable, you know, interventions which can bring in change. Thank you so much, Rajeshti, for such wonderful thoughts. Mm -hmm.